So a coronavirus is a type of virus that's found in many animals uh, and also humans. And it's called a coronavirus because if you look at an electron micrograph of the virus, you see these little spikes and it almost looks like a crown. And that's where the word uh, coronavirus comes from. There are many types of coronaviruses, at least four will cause upper respiratory infections in children. And then starting in 2003, we started to see serious lung disease from pandemics caused by one of three coronavirus, SARS-1, that began in 2003 and caused 800 deaths. Then something called MERS, which is called the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, and now, now this new SARS-2 uh, coronavirus that's causing a disease called COVID-19. The SARS-2 coronavirus uh, is, a, is a respiratory virus that spreads through what's called droplet contact. By that I mean somebody sneezes or coughs and releases micro droplets that either go directly on your face and then you rub those droplets into the mucous membranes of your eyes or mouth and that's why we tell you not to touch your face uh, in order to prevent you from getting this virus or the virus can land on surfaces and then you come into contact with your hands and then touch your face or get it into your eyes or mouth. There's another mode of transmission uh, which is called airborne transmission and we don't know if this occurs for the SARS-2 coronavirus or not. In this case you're getting small uh, droplets that can travel for meters or several feet in the air uh, and then are also infectious. Uh, so we're really trying to establish all the different modes of transmission. We're pretty confident about the droplet mode. We're not so sure about airborne. And there's even a third possibility of fecal oral transmission because we can uh, detect sometimes this virus in the feces, but we don't know if that's clinically significant. The classic symptoms of COVID-19 caused by the SARS-2 coronavirus is fever, uh, cough, and in many patients, respiratory distress. So in, in the early stages, uh, this virus can resemble upper respiratory infections, colds, later on it can resemble the flu, but the serious component of when this virus travels deep into the lungs, especially in individuals who are older, who have underlying chronic conditions such as diabetes or hypertension, it can cause a very serious respiratory uh, illness characterized by shortness of breath and difficulty uh, oxygen, oxygenating the bloodstream. Right now, uh, we currently have no antiviral drug for the treatment of, of this virus. So the only treatment that we have are for severely ill patients uh, who uh, may require intubation in an intensive care unit and other supportive treatments. Right now, we don't have a vaccine for the SARS-2 coronavirus. Uh, here at Baylor College of Medicine, our National School of Tropical Medicine, together with Texas Children's Hospital, uh, we've developed one prototype uh, vaccine and are developing a second one, but this is still going to be a, a long ways off because it has to go through clinical testing. So without the benefit of a vaccine, what we have to use is old fashioned methods uh, to prevent yourself from getting infection. And, we, and they're similar to the ones you would ordinarily use to avoid getting the flu, which means uh, that you wash your hands frequently with hot water and soap. And, and that's uh, hand wa frequent hand washing is an important way to prevent yourself from getting this virus. Avoid touching your face. We, you'd be surprised how many times a person touches their face in the course of the day. And so learn behavior to avoid that. Also, uh, potentially avoiding large crowds uh, where people might be transmitting the virus, especially if we hear that there's community transmission going on. Be mindful and look out in, in the coming days and weeks whether that starts to occur. I think it's more of a question of being mindful than worried. Right now, there is no significant level of community-based transmission, meaning unless you've traveled overseas or come into contact and, and acquired the virus there or, or come into contact with somebody known to have the virus, you're not going to get this uh, virus. Now, that may change in a couple of weeks, 
because across the country, we're starting to see these pockets of community-based transmission. Right now, it's most active up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, in, in the Seattle area. Uh, so this is something you need to be mindful of and watch out for. It's especially important if you're one of the high-risk groups that seems to get very, very ill with this virus infection. One are older individuals, uh, particularly individuals in nursing homes or in assisted living facilities. We've seen, for instance, in a nursing home in Kirkland, Washington recently, uh, where 100 residents lived, there's been 11 deaths so far. So we, if, you're, if you're older or over the age of 70, or if you have underlying conditions such as diabetes or hypertension, you are at risk for more, for more severe illness and you need or your family needs to help you take extra precautions from getting this virus. Two other populations I'm concerned about, healthcare providers. Uh, we've seen in Wuhan and central China uh, when this happened, uh, more than a thousand healthcare workers got infected and for reasons that we don't understand, about 15% got seriously ill. Many required being hospitalized in the ICU. So if you're a healthcare provider, you also have to take special precautions. And we're also seeing a lot of cases among our first responders who are often uh, coming to the aid of somebody who has this virus infection and they don't realize this person has it.